I met Clara when she was homeless. She was 35 at the time. She is Cuban. She had a dark complexion, beautiful woman. But she was actually five months pregnant. And she was a drug addict as well as an alcoholic. I'm a mother type person. So I told her I would help her, got her into detox, got her cleaned up. She stayed at my house. And she knew the baby was going to be uh, handicapped in some form. An Austin man faces murder charges in connection with the stabbing death of a woman. She went in to buy cigarettes and a Coke. There was a homeless guy leaning against a car right at the entrance. And as she walked by, he grabbed her glasses off her head. And she turned around to confront him. Police were called to a Texaco near Otorp and I-35 yesterday afternoon to break up a dispute. He reached into his knapsack and pulled out a knife. She took off running across the parking lot to get away from him. He took off after her. When they arrived, they found a woman in her 30s had been stabbed. A man was on top of her, took one swipe on the back of the brainstem. The woman was pronounced dead later at Brackenridge Hospital. You want justice to happen. I do. I think everybody deserves a closure in some form or another. It's kind of hard to find any kind of closure when the guy's in limbo. I've never seen a person who is catatonic. And I just sat there because it was absolutely amazing to see this guy, like, become a statue. What do you do with someone who's been in restoration for 20 years in a state hospital? Yeah, that's where he stays. I mean, that's his prison. <laughs> So everything's locked. You're completely regulated and you're, you know, you're monitored at all times. Will there ever be closure in a case like James McMean's? I don't think so. The only thing that gives me hope is uh, science keeps getting better and better and better at some of these things. Who's responsible for the problem as it exists today? Is this a legislative problem? Is it a state agency? Who? Uh, I, I would put the burden on the legislature and, and the elected leadership of the state. We've neglected uh, facilities like our state hospitals to the point that, that they're degraded to where now we have to replace them either because the state failed to keep up with deferred maintenance and they're just crumbling, or because um, we didn't keep up with science. Now, while I put the blame there, I will tell you that over the last several years, the legislature has done much better in that regard. We need to make additional progress in the continuum of care to support the Austin State Hospital. And we're working now on, with a piece of legislation, Senate Bill 2111, that I passed during the last session, that calls for the Health and Human Services Commission to work directly with academic medicine, the Dale Medical School, to talk about how we bring them together in a way where we're getting 21st century state-of-the-art brain health care. you're hearing it the most is from those who are advocating for people that have brain health issues that are being tied up in the system. And it's not just the person being detained, the victims in these crimes, they're also denied justice. It, it, justice delayed is justice denied on both sides of that issue. You know, the closure for James McMeans is, 
you're in a murder trial. There's no freedom for him. There's no straight up acquittal. Well, they're not gonna dismiss. He's gonna be prosecuted if he's competent. Thirty-year-old James McMeans is charged with first-degree murder. And this gentleman who killed Clara, it's not fair. I, I understand what happened. I forgive the guy because I don't believe it was his fault. It sounds like you're holding out hope that something will happen in this case, and clearly you're taking care of Jonathan still. I don't talk to Jonathan about Clara. You took this child in and even learning sign language. So he's completely hearing impaired? Totally. Profoundly deaf. But Jonathan and I had no problem communicating. I prayed to God that he would send me an army of angels to help me take care of him, to help me raise him to be the best person he was going to end up being. Every time I look at him, I see her. You can still see her eyes in him. At least I can. Online now, Locked in Limbo, the digital project. Watch the complete series of stories and solutions. Check out our immersive article and data features on this topic, plus resources for you and your loved ones facing mental health challenges and the criminal justice system to get help. And don't forget our weekly investigative podcast, Catalyst, to continue exploring what we've discovered. It's all online now at LockedInLimbo.com. Children removed from their homes for their own safety. There's a growing need for volunteers to step up to support these young Texans. The simple thing you can do to help children in desperate need.